Particulate is an open source tool. It's basically an open source tool that is built in JavaScript, it's built in Node, that you can use to build multiplayer real-time applications very fast. Now, I'm going to go through how easy it is for you to build with Particit. Now, Particit is open source. So if you Google it right now, or you go on GitHub and search for it, you'll see it to come up. Or you can just go to particit.io. Now, it's a very interesting name, Particit. It's literally a kit that you can use to do multi-parties. So where you have multiple, uh, multiple people, and you want to join them in a room, or you want to have as many rooms as possible, for example, you're trying to build a chat application that has so many rooms, you can actually use party kit, and I will show you how simple and straightforward it is right now. Now, with party kit, there are two components. You have the party kit server, and you have the party socket. The party kit server and the web socket, right? So from what you can see here, the party kit server accepts connections from so many clients. So as clients are joining, the work of the party kit server is to be able to accept those connections, perform the logic that you need to do on the server, and broadcast the result of that action to all the clients. So look at what you guys were tapping. What was happening was as people were joining and tapping those emojis, what was happening on the server is that the server was incrementing the count of each emojis and then broadcasting it to all the clients. So as you tap and somebody else is tapping, you can see it change in real time and all the clients are receiving the result of that action in real time. So that's what the party kit server does. Now for the client, what the client does is just to connect to as many party kit servers as possible through web sockets. So let's move to the next side. So this is how, I don't know if you guys can see the code, but this is how a party kit server looks. You have a simple class that comes with some lifecycle methods, right? From what we have on the screen here, we have a message on connect and on close. So on connect is called when clients are joining the server. On message is for you to perform the logic that you need to perform on the server and then send the result to all the clients. That's all the people connected to the server. So no matter where people are connected from, if they're connected from their phones or from their laptops or from their iPads, anything that you do in that logic within the on message, the last line to put here is this.party.broadcast. It will broadcast the result of the actions and just send it to all the clients automatically. You don't even have to think about it because the logic has already been done within the party, cards, uh, the party kit module itself. So let's go to the web socket. Now, this is the other side of things. What I showed you before was the party kit server. Now, this is the client part of it, which is the party socket client. Now, in the party socket client, I don't know if you can see it very well, but on the second line, you can see that we are instantiating a party socket instance. And now there are two things that are very important there. You have the URL of the party socket, and then you have the ID of the room. Now, it's very important because you can connect to as many rooms as possible. So in your logic, in your code, this can be, for example, in your app, maybe you need 50 rooms, depending on the type of application you're building. Let's say you're building a chat application and people have to do one-on-one -on -one, or people can be in a channel altogether. So with this party socket instance, you can have so many room IDs. You can give it whatever, you, like whatever name you want. Maybe you can do a random um, logic calculation for it to just name the rooms. But you can connect to as many party socket instances and then you can send a message using party socket to send to the servers. Like it is this simple. And then you can listen to incoming messages from the server, right? From the server side, I told you how, you know, you can broadcast to all the clients. But here on the client, as long as you add this event listener and you listen to message, you can always get all the results that you want easily from the party kit server. Now, you also have the last one here called the, when you're listening to the open method. You're listening to that open method means when a client, as a client is joining the server, whatever you want to happen here is what will happen. So you have a party kit, again, server, and you have a WebSocket client. Now, the party kit server has some lifecycle methods. The WebSocket too also has its own method. All you need to do is just put logic in each of the appropriate methods and you're done. It's that simple. Now, these are the questions that people will ask, right? As a developer, 
when you develop these things, you are going to ask. Like the demo that, that just embarrassed me right now. Before I, before I came to this talk, I promise you I tested it. It was working. So I have to go back and check whether it is you guys' internet or something happened. Right? Now, the questions you ask yourself after the, you know, building this kind of app, especially when it's time for you to publish it, is number one, does it scale? How many people can connect to the app at the same time? 10, 100, 200. There is, there is something I always remember when I was in university that year, when everybody is joining the server at the same time, maybe people are trying to check their results or trying to register, everything goes down. Now we don't want it to go down. So the question is, if you use party kits to build a multiplayer real-time app, how many clients can connect, right? Look at the number of people we have in this room. If you double it or you triple it, can everybody connect to the client at the same time and still have a good experience using the app? That's the question. Now, the second one is, how do I actually deploy this kind of app, right? On what infrastructure, right? Is it going to be on Linode? Is it going to be on Google? Is it going to be on Facebook infrastructure? Is it going to be on AWS? What's the easiest way to deploy it? Or how do you deploy it in a way where you don't need a special DevOps person to come and start managing it? You as a sorry, no offense to DevOps people. I love you guys. But as developers, sometimes you just want to man the entire process, right? Then the last question you are going to ask is, what about buffering and drop-offs, right? Some of the complaints you had right now, while checking it, was, it was hanging, right? And that's one of the major problems of multiplayer apps. You want to be sure that the infrastructure you are building on top and deploying is not going to buffer. And if it buffers or if the connection drops, it can reconnect automatically. And one of the things PartyKit excels at is the ability for it to reconnect automatically. You don't have to do anything in your code. It has the ability to do that. So PartyKit scales because it was built on top of Cloudflare, right? Cloudflare has something they call durable objects. I don't know, how many of you have played with durable objects before? So they have durable objects and they have workers. So PartyKit is built on top of that so that when you deploy a PartyKit app, it is deployed to the edges of the world, basically. So wherever the client is, no matter where they are, whether they are in front of you or they are in some other remote part of the world, it's very easy for them to connect and the connection will be smooth, it will be fast, and there will be no buffering. Now, let's go to the scale question. This is a very important question. Now, there is something that you can configure when you are trying to deploy a particular app. It is called hibernation. Now, with hibernation, your app can scale up to 32,000 connections per instance, per part instance. What that simply means is that you can have 32,000 clients literally connect to that, to that server. Right? The moment you have more than 32,000 uh, uh, clients, then everything breaks. But as long as you have less than 32,000 connections, this is going to scale. Now, that's if you use hibernation. If you don't use hibernation, the max you can do is 100. So it can be a toy app. You cannot like, deploy a serious app with it. Right? But that's, that's all you need to know. There's something called hibernate. And what hibernation does simply is, if there's a connection that is not being used that is at, like, actively, it just hibernates a bit, right? But it doesn't disturb the experience of the app. So if you set hibernate to true, it means 32,000 people. In fact, how many people are here? I don't think we're up to two or 300. So if I deployed that app now, and I like, just went to the streets and told everybody to connect, as long as less than 32,000 connections are happening, Everything is meant to work fine. It's meant to not buffer. It's meant to be very smooth. So this is a scale question. Now, if you want more than 32,000 connections, then you have to move. They have, uh, Particit has what you call an enterprise um, uh, plan. So if you want more than 32,000 connections, then of course you have to like, talk to the builders of this open source package. But it's an open source package. So you don't have to pay anything you just go ahead and deploy. So what about deployments? So this is exactly how I deployed the Particit app. In fact, I deployed it this morning. It was just on my system. And it's as simple as using the command above, right? MPX Particit deploy, that's all. So what this, what this does is it deploys your app to Particit's infrastructure. Again, 
particular infrastructure is leveraging Cloudflare, right? So if you know Cloudflare here, you know that Cloudflare scales. Almost everybody uses Cloudflare. So if an infrastructure or a tool is built on top of Cloudflare, then you have the assurance that it scales, right? That it's going to work. Now, again, it's just one single command. So when you use this command, MPX particle deploy, it's going to connect to your GitHub account, you're going to give it permission, and then it's just going to take, accept the permission, and then use your username and, of course, deploys it. So if you check that link here, you can see that the link is what you have on, on my slide here. Def, um, defsku.unicodedeveloper.partkey.dev. So that's, that's how simple it is to deploy. Very simple, literally. All right. So that's the first part of this talk. Now we are going into the second part. So the second part is the notification toolkit. I've talked about notifications a lot of times. I've given a, talk, a lot of talk about it. And I had to add it to this talk because, I mean, if you are dealing with apps that has to do with like real-time collaboration or things where people are connecting, then you need some way to notify people. And you have to do it in a very efficient way or you have to do it in a way where you don't have to spend a lot of energy coding and swapping code. So I'm going to talk about a tool called Novo. Now, from what you can see on the slide here, what we have here is what you call in-app notifications, right? There are different types of notifications, email, SMS, in-app, push, right? But when you're building a web app, you find yourself many times looking for how to build an in-app notification. And in fact, the general rule of thumb is that you just build it from scratch, right? You build a UI component, you connect a WebSocket server, you build it, and then you start maintaining. What if you don't have to do that? What if you can just use an existing open source tool? So, Novu. Novu is an open source tool that is basically the notification infrastructure for developers. There is nothing that you want to do with notifications that you cannot do with Novu, and it's free of charge. Again, it's open source. The tools I'm talking to you about today are open source, and they are free. Party Kit is free, it's open source, you can check it out. Novo is free, and it's open source. So let's move to the next one. What I'm going to talk about now is when you build an app and you are trying to incorporate notifications into your app, there are some pain points. Initially, if it's just one, if, for example, you want to add email notifications to your app, it's simple, it's email, right? Look for an email provider. What's an email provider that we know? Huh? I can't hear you. NodeMailer, SendGrid, MailGun. Which other one? Which one? MailJet, exactly. So that's an example. These are examples of email providers. So what do you do, right? You go to, if you're using a framework, your framework has already provided like a level of abstraction, and then you just put in the name of the provider, you put in your credentials, and you're good to go. If you're not using a framework, then sorry for you. You have to install, you have to go and get like the library, right, of that email provider, connect it, write the code for it, and then you're done. Then tomorrow, your boss comes, or your PM comes and says, hey, email is not working like enough for us. We want to add more. Let's add SMS. What do you do? What's the, SM, what's the popular SMS provider we have here? Temai. Good. So you go and sign up on Temai, and then what? You go to their developer page and go and look for their library. And then you install that library. And then, of course, you call, you use the Temai SDK or you use the API in your code. And then you integrate that. What happens again? Your boss comes to you and says, OK, let's add push notification. Because our users are still not seeing our product for some reasons. We need to target everybody. They must use this app or that. Then what do you do? You go and look for Firebase, FCM, right? If you are doing for Apple, what do you do? APNS, right? And then you have to integrate that again. So now we have gone from email to SMS to push, right? Then your boss comes again and tells you, ah, that's not enough. When the user logs in, I want them to see it like LinkedIn. I want them to see all the notifications like LinkedIn at the top right. It must be there. It must be there. Then you have to build another one again, right? So when you look at it now, you have gone through several stages of grief, literally, as a developer, right? You cannot cuss out your boss because your boss pays your salary. And now the economy is tight. 
So you have to hold your job, right? So what do you do? <laughs> Anyways, another thing that they can tell you to do again, which I'll give an example of is, I don't know how many of you use LinkedIn very well, or let, 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 let's go back. Let's, let's circle back to Facebook. Remember the times of Facebook when it was the instinct to poke somebody? Am, am I old? I'm not old, right? Okay, I don't think they do that anymore. But then it used to be poking. When, when did Facebook come to Nigeria? I think people started using Facebook actively in Nigeria in 2000 and when? 2009? Good. I think 2010, when, when we started discovering Facebook, not our parents, so we. When we started discovering Facebook, you sign up on Facebook and then you're looking for friends. And then when you see somebody that you know, you poke the person, right? And the person will get a notification that, oh, somebody has poked you. And you, instead of you to stop there, you just keep, keep poking. So what does Facebook do? Facebook is not going to send you a notification immediately somebody pokes you, especially if the person is crazy enough to be poking you every five, five seconds. Right? Because we have mad people roaming around. So instead of Facebook sending you all that notification every single time, what Facebook is going to do is that Facebook will batch those notifications. And what am I talking about? So if somebody sends a poke notification to you, like pokes you, 10 times in 10 minutes. Facebook is saying, this person, we're in LA, this person is crazy. So they will send you only one, then maybe 10 minutes later, they will send you the 10 pokes. Say, this guy has poked you 10 times. What do you want to do about it? So they've batched it. Now, that system of batching is what you call a digest system. So if you don't know about that, you know something new now, a digest system. Now, sometimes when you have built notifications in your app, you will have to implement a digest system at some point. And now, building a digest system from scratch is not really easy. It's very difficult because there are so many conditions and so many edge cases that you have to look at, right? But with Novu, Novu comes pre-installed with what you call a batch system, a digest system. So if you want to configure and say, you know what? I want notifications to be sent every morning and every night. Now, if so many notifications happen between the afternoon and evening, don't send it every time. Just send it in the night or send it in the morning and send all the notifications together. Novu is able to do that kind of stuff. But let's move forward. What we have here on the board is we have Slack, we have Discord, we have email, we have mobile notifications. Now, Novu is like a unified API that combines everything together. For example, when you use Paystack or use any payment system, what happens is that you connect to Paystack, then Paystack tries to charge your card, right? So Paystack behind the scenes is connecting to MasterCard or Visa Card and like all of those retinue of cards, card providers. So that's what Novu does. Novu is a unified API, right? Everything has been added to Novu. You have your email providers, you have SMS, you have push notifications, you have um, in-app. All you have to do is, we'll get there now. So this is an example of the dashboard when you sign up on Novu. Right? You sign up on Novu on web.novu.co. Now, when you sign up on Novu, what you discover is that you have an integration store. What is an in integration store? You have providers, some of these providers that we just mentioned, you have all of those providers in different channels. Now, there are four major channels. Email channel, SMS channel, push channel, and in-app. Right? Now, each of the channels has multiple providers. So from what you can see here, I don't know, you guys can see it properly but I'll just explain. In the email channel, you have so many providers. You have SendGrid, you have MailTrap, you have MailGone, you have Mandrill, you have you know, AWS, SES, you have many providers. So instead of you having to go and integrate these providers by yourself, you have Novu that you can integrate and you can just select the provider that you want from the dashboard. So you sign up on Novu, you just select the provider, and then you move to the next step, which is creating what you call a workflow. So a workflow is the blueprint of a notification. You create a workflow, you select the channels. You're like, okay, I want to send a notification to this person, but I don't want it to be just an in-app. I want it to go send in-app, send SMS, send email. Now, you don't have to go ahead and write code to do all of that, because that's how it is, right? You are going to write code in your logic. You are going to write code to send to email, send to SMS, send to in-app. You don't have to do that. All you need to do is one line of code. 
Now, the only reason why you can do only one line of code is because you have configured it from the dashboard here. So in the dashboard, you can have a workflow, add an in-app channel, add an email channel, add an SMS. So what you have is the workflow is going to say, okay, now three channels have been connected. I need to send SMS, I need to send email, and I need to send in-app. So when you go to your code at the end of the day, what you have to do in your code, I'm just going to skip this part, is this. You are just going to call one line of code to trigger that particular workflow. Now, there's a difference, right? Here, you are triggering the workflow. Now, when you trigger the workflow, what Novo does is, Novo looks for the workflow on your dashboard and say, oh, okay, I need to send this notification to three channels, email, SMS, and in-app. Now, the only thing you are doing here is to write the code that triggers the workflow. And you can see something here. You have the subscriber. The subscriber is the user you're sending to. So you put the subscriber details, and that's all you need to do. Then you can send custom payloads. Custom payload means you want your, your notification to be dynamic. So you can inject things within the notification. But again, instead of you writing a bunch of code to send to different channels, now you're writing only one small block of code that is triggering the workflow that goes ahead to manage all the channels for you. So this this is how it looks like in the example, right? Um, but this is a screenshot I just, uh, just took from the demo. So what we have is we have a notification center by the right, right? The notification center is Novo. It's a widget. I insert the widget within my web app, and then I trigger the notifications. When I trigger the notifications from the back end, the user gets an in-app notification. And it's as simple as straightforward as that. So... For Novu, Novu comes with widgets for all the technologies that you use. So if you're a Vue.js fan here, there is a Vue.js notification center widget. If you're a React, um, React person here, there is a React component. Now, if you don't do any of those frameworks, it also has what you call a web component, right? It has a web com component, and it also had a headless system. Now, the headless system is simple. If you don't like the way Novu's notification widget is, you can build your own. In fact, it is called bring your own UI, right? So the headless system just connects to Novu, and then you can build a custom UI, a custom user interface around that system. So you have as much flexibility as you want, basically, for you to be able to use Novu. Now, on the backend side of things, which is where you actually trigger your notifications from, where you say, oh, I want this notification to be sent based on this action, right? Maybe somebody logs into, another person logs into someone's device, you know, and you don't, know, you don't recognize that device, you want to send a notification and say, hey, like somebody just logged into your device, right? You are going to send that from the, from the back end. The back end is going to trigger that. Now, for Novu, Novu has SDKs for all the technologies that you can think of, right? If you use Java, there's a Java SDK. If you use PHP, there's a PHP SDK for you. If you use Go, there's also a Go SDK. If you use .NET, there's a .NET SDK for you. So you can just integrate any SDK of your choice. If you use Python, there's a Python SDK. If you use Laravel, like me, there's a Laravel SDK. So all the SDKs that you can think of, all the technologies that you can think of that you use, there is an integration for you to be able to use that to trigger the notifications. So if you want to learn more about Novu, you can check this site out, right? docs.novu.co is going to give you everything that you need to learn about Novu, how to integrate, quick start, anything that you need to do. There are guides, there are use cases, there are demos. And then, of course, there's a YouTube channel. There is also like a dev blog that you can use to just learn as much as you want, right, about this. So these tools I've introduced you to, again, Particit and Novu. After this talk, feel free to check them out. Google them. They are open source. They are free. The idea of this talk is that after this talk, now, you have two more tools that you can use to do things easily. If you want to build a real-time app, you have PartyKit. If you want to do notifications easily, you have Novu. Two open source and free packages that you can use to make your life easy as a developer. So one thing I always like to talk about is that because Novu is open source, Novu is always looking for contributors to contribute to the package, to contribute to the system, right? You have the core system that allows you to do all of these things I talked about, and you have all the SDKs I just talked about, right? 
So if you are somebody in the house here, if you are somebody in the house here, there is, um, there is an open source contributor, or you are looking for how to break into open source, then Novo is a very good choice for you, right? You have, there's a core JavaScript repository that powers the entire system, and then you have a lot of SDKs in different languages. So if there's a language that you have, that you're using, that there's no integration for, you can come and contribute here, and we are going to accept your contributions, right? If you're using F Sharp, and you need an F Sharp SDK, come and contribute. Do people still use F Sharp? I'm not a .NET person again, but I know there was a time that was F Sharp. Where are the .NET people in the house? Wow, are they in the bank? Huh? Saturday, they are working. Wow. Anyways, so like I was saying, this link here is the link to the Novo community. So feel free to join that link, like you can join it right now. There's a contributors channel, and there is a, like a chat channel, right? I'm also in that. Um, I'm also in that community. So, if you are feeling like creating a new integration, or you just really want to learn how to code more, or you want to contribute to open source, right? As Ace Kid, we say, open source is the new source, right? Open source has helped so many people's lives. Has helped my life personally. So, if you want to contribute and you're looking for the best place to start, I can tell you for sure that Novi is the best place to start. If you're looking to contribute to front end, right, we have a notification center widget. And that widget, you know, people are always contributing stuff to it. So you can come and contribute. You know, if there's a new framework that you use, if you use Cellvert, or you use, what's the new one that came out last night? Do you know the new one that came out last night? Uh, you guys are not following. So if you're using any new framework, any new JavaScript framework that I'm not aware of right now, and you think that you need an integration for that, feel free to contribute. So please join the community and um, yeah. So I think I've gotten to the end of my talk, but anyways, I think I'll be fielding questions just in case. Um, I know I talked about party kits and I talked about Novo. So if you have any questions or there are anything that you want to clarify, please feel free to ask and I'll answer your questions right now.